Okay, so this is what the question says. Um, uh, while sliding a couch across the floor, Andrea and Jennifer exert forces. Uh, okay, let me start drawing it. Um, okay, it looks like I'm being given directions in terms of north and east. So let me just uh, draw what looks like a standard axis and I will um, label them with a northeast direction. So I think this being east and this being north is kind of standard ish, you know, almost mapped north is up. Um, okay, so Andreas of Force is due north. Okay, good. That's nice. Nice and easy along the, exactly along the one of the axis directions with a magnitude of 130 newtons. And Jennifer's Force is at 28 degrees east of north. Okay, I need to draw that. So something east of north. Uh, with a magnitude 175 Newton. And your drawing doesn't have to be too scale, but I try to be reasonable. Like if this was 130, then 175 might look something like this. And it's okay if they are off, but I, I think the drawings being too scale helps um, not get misled by out of scale drawings. And two, just to come up with any intuitive idea that might be helpful. So, awesome. The, yeah, it's the, oh, I already did that. Um, okay, part A says find the net force in component of form, and um, and this is something that uh, generally advisable. Uh, whenever you are calculating net or total of any vector quantities, that you um, really want to work with the components. The components are um, easier to work with algebraically because when you are adding these two vectors in terms of their arrow descriptions, then in terms of adding them graphically, you know, head to tail, um, that, that, and so I guess this is the, the sum of those two vectors. Graphical method is great for um, illustrating it, but it's uh, <laughs> quite easy for working out quantitatively. So, so what I want to do is I want to write down uh, both uh, uh, Andreas force and Jennifer's force in terms of their components. So I think Andreas force is easier. It's all in the north direction and I'm gonna be using these um, coordinate uh, unit vectors in um, unit vector X hat in the, in the eastward direction and unit vector Y hat, a vector of unit length, length of one no unit <laughs> is in the north direction. So um, so I can think of Andreas of force as being this unit vector times 130 Newtons. So force due to Andrea is equal to 130 Newton by head. Jennifer's force is the harder one um, because it's going at a diagonal angle I bo uh, the Jennifer's force both has a component that's along the x-axis and component that's along the y-axis. And I like to think of something like it, this in these terms. Uh, this uh, entire force vector as being made of two component vectors. And you can actually imagine adding them graphically. This is the x-component and this is the y-component. And the way I've drawn, it's already kind of graphical head to tail addition. So this will be my X component of Jennifer's force. And this is my, this will be my uh, Y component of Jennifer's force. And as you're drawing these components, I hope you recognize this right triangle. The right triangles help you work out the trigonometry. So let me say, okay, this is the right angle. And we are given this angle theta. So let me just uh, label the other angle in this diagram that's equal to the theta. And that should be this angle here. Um, you can use whatever <laughs> geometry you know to prove that. Um, hopefully this makes sense. If not, contact me, let me know, and uh, we can figure out. But uh, this uh, drawing of the right triangle and locating the angle, that's going to be something that you do many times um, in Newton's law of problem solving. So it's something worth practicing early on. 
with this angle labeled, now I can actually associate these legs of the right triangle with the hypotenuse. Um, so this X component, it's the opposite of the angle. So uh, this is where you have to remember, so, ka, toa, um, as in uh, sine of an angle is the opposite of our hypotenuse, you know, O, H, and ka, cosine of an angle is A, adjacent, over again, hypotenuse. So here, um, since this is on the opposite side, what you can say is that uh, sine of the angle theta is the opposite. The F uh, due to Jennifer, X component divided by the hypotenuse, of course, due to Jennifer, the magnitude. Um, or just the solving it for the X component, you have the force due to Jennifer in the X component is Fj times sine theta. And this is the magnitude of the amount of the vector that's in the, along the direction of X ahead. So you can actually um, write down the vector version of this, which will be, so let me just build it together the force due to Jennifer. That's going to be this X component times the X hat unit vector. So that's uh, the algebraic description of this exact arrow. And for you to get the full vector, you need to add the Y component. That's the adjacent side. So it'll work out to be Fj times cosine of theta times Y hat. So these are your component representation of the two vectors you are given. And once you have these, then you can just do the algebra. So we can say that, okay, for the net force, you can say, okay, so for the net force, that's gonna be the FA as a vector plus FJ, as vector. And I really like this unit vector notation. There is a reason for that. The biggest reason is um, you can treat this as a regular algebraic expression. So treating it as a regular algebraic expression, what this sum becomes is 130 Newton y hat plus, um, oh, let me <laughs> plug in the numbers. <laughs> um, 175 Newton times the uh, sine of 28 degrees X hat plus 175 Newton cosine of 28 degrees Y hat. And this is what I mean. You can treat this as a regular algebraic expression. You can collect, uh, you can collect like terms. So you have terms that contain y hat, and you can collect them together and then factor out y hat. When you do that, you get 130 Newton, this term, this coefficient, plus this 175 Newton times cosine of 28 degrees. And then you factor that y hat, so it's multiplying with a y hat on the outside. And then you have just one term that depends on x. So plus 175 Newton sine of 28 degrees uh, x hat. And here the order is swapped, but um, uh, for the algebraic prep properties of these objects, it doesn't matter whether it's x hat coming first, y hat coming first. It means the same thing because it's the hat notation that sets apart the x component from the y component. So I can work out this number, plug it in there, work out this number and plug it in there. Um, let me do this in Ofram Alpha in the interest of time. It's Ofram Alpha, it's easy, uh, quicker than doing this on a calculator. So I have a 175 Newton and I guess I could have put in Newton, but let me just omit Newton since Newton is here. 175 times, um, sine of 28 degrees, they understood me fine, 82.16, um, yeah, let me just 
refer to that later and uh, do this calculation. So 130 Newton, or just 130, plus 175 Newton times cosine of uh, 20 degrees. So 284.5 Newton. So yeah, those two should be the answer. Um, 82.16 and then 284.5. Okay. Um, so this is the, the additional part that you have to do for this question that you didn't have to do for question one. And now uh, we're going to go the other way. Uh, so we have the net force in the component form. Once you have it in component form, then you can um, then you can um, re-express it in the polar form in terms of the magnitude and direction. Uh, let me do it right on screen with the zoom annotation. I think that's going to be quicker since I already have the numbers on screen here. So um, for this, you yeah you don't yeah yeah I think that will be fine. Um, so. For converting from the component uh, version to the the component um, form, <laughs> component form to the polar form, um, it helps to have a picture in mind. So you have the net force with some x and y component. And here, once again, I want you to think about the right triangle this right triangle here, or the other one, either of them work. Um, this angle here is right angle, that's why it's a right triangle. And when they talk about the magnitude, they're talking about this hypotenuse, that's the force, or the net force. So, so the, the problem here comes down to, okay, what's the hypotenuse of a right triangle? Pythagorean theorem. And from Pythagorean theorem, you know, or I hope you remember, that this hypotenuse is equal to square root of fx, the sum of the squares of the legs, fx squared plus fy squared, and then, then square root, that's the hypotenuse. Um, and the, for the direction, let's see, it's uh, having us to um, something of east. Oh, I guess the north of east is probably the easiest way to describe this. So I have, uh, this is my eastern direction, and this is the northern direction from east. So I'm looking for this angle here. And uh, this is, uh, finding direction in angles, it's uh, the trick function that's uh, most often useful is tangent. Because the tangent of theta, it just gives the rise over the run, or the y over x, or in this case, the y component of the net force over the x component of net force. That's going to give me tangent of theta. And you do have to be a little bit careful because somehow if this is in the range where you're going to get obtuse angle, then you really should find the right triangle with the acute angle. Here, I already have an acute angle. So if I simply say theta is arc tangent of y over x, arctangent being the inverse function of tangent. I just uh, imagined doing this, putting the entire thing through arctangent. Then you will get an acute angle, and that will be the right one. So let me just plug in the numbers to convince myself that it is right. Um, so uh, my components. 284.5 divided by 82.16. That's the ratio uh, that's going to get put through arctangent. So trig, second, inverse tangent. So 73 point, I think that's already in degrees, yeah. So the angle here should be 73.89 degrees. Um, 73.89 degrees north of east. Oh, and I never calculated this. So let me do that. 284.5 squared plus uh, 82.16 squared. Okay, that's the sum. Let me take the square root. 
and I get 296.1. Uh, that seems reasonable to me. Uh, 296.1. That's the length of this hypotenuse. Okay. And uh, the last one, I think this is. Um, Yeah, uh, this is uh, something that um, in other contexts we call weak equilibrium. Um, it's the force that if we add it to the other things that makes the net force zero, it's basically the opposite of the net force that we have found. So, um, hopefully after you read the question, that makes a sense. Um, so vectors, once you get used to the, uh, handling them, they are quite useful. They the Usefulness of vectors can't really be overstated. The only um, the thing that bums me out is uh, we don't use it quite as much in uh, in physics for a, especially in the vector notation, without necessarily breaking it down into components. In physics for a, as you will see when you go through a standard strategy, you'll see us always breaking it down into components and working with the components. And um, in the higher levels of physics and engineering, you deal with the more abstract vectors. Um, and and I'll, I'll just leave that there because in this class, we're not really gonna get to that, but working, uh, learning to work with the vectors, that's something that uh, everyone should make sure that they know how to do. Okay. 